Hello everyone, and welcome to another Incarnate Livestream. Today we are doing Secrets of the Citadel Ruins Part 4. In this episode, we're going to be adding lights, shadows, and details. In the last previous episode, we put down structures. You see those light-colored ruins, and we also added that nice campfire in the starving area. So let's go ahead and just get right in, okay? All right, so first and foremost, like I mentioned, lights, shadows, and details in that particular order, at least for me, I'm gonna start with a light source. And the way that we go about that, of course, is to add a light source. So we can go right into the catalog, just type in light, and you'll see that there are options here. And we're gonna start first with a, a orangish light. I'm gonna put that in the center, and then I'll add another light on top of that the more yellowish one, make it bring the size up a little bit. And then of course, I wanna make sure that that bigger one is at layer five, so that that way it's making sure that everything the light touches will kind of show up on it. You wanna have that, okay? And then this will also help with knowing where shadows will go, because that's why you do lights. And then once you know where the light sources are, then you know where the shadows are as well. So the next thing is we want to figure out where the natural lighting is. There's already a light there for the campfire. So now we want to apply, you know, uh, a light direction. Where's the light coming from? It can come from anywhere, really. Um, I What we can do is there are two approaches that I see. Um, and one is just to do purely high noon. And this makes it easier, especially if you're new to doing shadow, light and shadows. This means you just need to have a little drop shadow. Or what's called ambient occlusion which means there's a little bit of that the these stamps all have a some kind of hard shadow allowing them to pop out um, that's the easiest one and the more difficult uh, way of doing shadows is directional shadows which is very very difficult and we will go maybe into that and this one we're just going to start with your typical um, ambient occlusion meaning there's no actual direction, there's just high noon, the sun's coming straight down. And when I do my lighting, I like to use the top layer. This is a relatively new feature. It's um, super nice and it doesn't interact with filters unless you know how to add colors to, um, add colors to the top layer besides black um, because they don't interact with shadows very well. So there's a trick with that and we can go over that another time. So let's choose the color that we want. I'm just going to use black and I'm going to bring the opacity down. I like to go around 30 or so. Anywhere between 30 and 35 works fine. And make the, sure the softness is all the way up. And the objective is just to make um, things pop out a little bit. So what we'll start with is maybe putting some ambient occlusion around um, the, the ruins itself. And the objective here is to kind of create this illusion that there's some depth. And you notice that I'm just putting it, not actually touching the ruin wall itself, because remember it is the top layer. And you'll see a big difference. When I started painting, you see those walls now absolutely pop out in comparison to the walls that don't have those shadows. So, and what's really nice is that when you use the top layer, it means any stamp or texture you put beneath it, it will also be affected by the shadows, which is what you would expect. If you were to put a stamp in uh, maybe, if you're just painting on the FG layer or whatever layer it's on, and you put a rock or whatever um, in that shadow, what won't happen is, is it won't get dark. It won't darken within that shadow. So using the top layer means that everything will be black or have the shadow. So that way it interacts. So I always use the top layer, even with filters, um, because there are tricks that you can do. So let's just start with this first. Remember, this is ambient occlusion. I just want these walls to pop out. So we'll keep adding shadows here. Here's a good one here. Definitely here, because this represents a whole other level. So not a bad idea to add it there. And you know, try not to overdo it, which means so black that it hides. When you go too dark, the, what happens is, is it starts to turn pure black and that contrast is too much. You only wanna create a significant amount of contrast for those walls to pop out, that's it. You don't have to go haywire. So just use a little bit. I am using a pen right now, but don't worry about that. 
I can use a pen, use a mouse as well. This is me using a mouse, you see. It just interacts different, but it's the same concept, and it's not hard. You think, well, I can't do this without a pen. No, you totally can. So just go in and add those shadows, that ambient occlusion there, and really make sure those walls pop out. We'll put some here as well. And, and of course, we're going to put some along the bridge here because we want to show that there's some height. And then since there's a shadows, since there is a light source in here, we can start doing some directional uh, shadows, just a little bit, some directional shadows because there is a light source in there. And you can even put some shadow here. There we go. So some light sources there. See, the beautiful thing about the top layer is you can you can do that. Now, if it's too dark, you can just go click that erase button, and then it will erase the top part of the top layer by whatever percentage is at. So it works out just fine, just using that top layer. Let's keep adding more. I'm just going to keep adding more and more shadows to each one until I'm finished. And then we'll move on to the um, some other steps where we can also do um, show some more natural lighting. So we'll apply some light stamps as well. Let's add it here as well. All right, yeah, this is looking pretty good. Things are popping out a little bit. That's good. All right, yes, looking good. All right, set my opacity to around 30%. So that way I can accumulatively add brushes. The trick is you don't want to start at a high percentage, like let's say 57%, and you'll see how dark, um, let's go with 100% so you can just see it. But if you go to 100%, you see how that doesn't work, right? So instead you set it to a lower opacity so that you don't make it too contrasty, right? So around 30% is where I put it to. Um, and that way, I even adding about three or four brush strokes on top of each other, it doesn't accidentally turn pure black. It just gets a little bit darker. So, just around thirty percent or so is a good is a good choice. Okay, there we go. Nice. All right. Yeah, this looks okay so far. I'm all right with it. It could probably do a lot more, but I don't want to spend a whole day with it. So, we'll just try to get the pieces that we can. That looks good. Okay, I'm trying to take what else. Yep. All right. Make sure that you catch, you know, all sides of it. And you'll notice right away that the stamps popped out. You know, really, who? Not also are the ruined stamps really light, much lighter, but there's also a darker shadow, that ambient occlusion, that causes it to pop out. Remember the trick to depth, I say this in every stream that I do, or that we do here, that contrast is the trick to depth. When you want things to seem further away or pop up a little bit more, use light and shadow or a lighter and darker. And that's what contrast is, right? It's the lightest light against the darkest dark. So a little bit of art there. All right, so I've done 122 changes. I'm gonna do a save because it's always good to do a quick save. And then from here, we'll start putting down some more light stamps. We can decide where, if you don't have to, because the, sh the light is straight down, high noon, we can usually just put some of the light sources in the open areas where there's not much obstruction from like trees or anything like that, right? So we can go back in, open up a light source, put it on layer, positive five, and I'm gonna bring the opacity down because I don't want it to look like there's a, just a campfire just right there. I want to bring the opacity down just enough to where it shows the hint of sunlight going down into the main area. And so what I'll do is I'll resize them to fit into these kind of areas like this. Put another one inside of here. This is a tight space, so I'm not gonna put a light source there. There's an open space there. And that kind of creates this illusion of light, right? And we can even put another one right here in this open space if you want. But that's generally how I go about doing that. You could also use the top layer if you wanted to, and you can also do highlights using the top layer. I usually set the top layer to overlay, but just know that when you do change the 
um, the layer, uh, the blend mode of the top layer, it's going to change how the the texture interacts or color. So if I switch it to overlay, you'll notice that it's not quite as dark, but we'll switch over to overlay anyway, and I can sh quickly show you how to do uh, highlights. So this is kind of a somewhat of a pro trip, pro tip, but I'll show you how to do it. Um, what you do is you wanna choose a yellow color or orange or whatever the light source color is, right? Top layer, make sure that the opacity is even lower. Um, I usually like to have it around, mm, Actually, let's go back to 30 and just 29 and see what that looks like. It looks good. And what you do is you set it to a really small size so that that way um, it's not going to affect too much. And then you just go on this edge right here like this, and you'll see that light. Now you're adding some light highlights. So for those of you who are a little bit more power users, you can just throw in this yellow light right here to kind of make it look like highlights. So a little pro tip there. Put some here as well. There we go. So it looks kind of cool, right? When you add in uh, those highlights, you can put them here too if you want along this green. Just make sure it's the same color. If it was an eerie blue or eerie green, you of course would add um, a green color set to overlay, right? So just make sure that you're you're aware of that, okay? So pretty cool, right? Look at that. You've got these nice, um, these nice little, um, highlights here so really cool trick to do that is just use the overlay blend mode with the uh, the top layer so super cool trick nice little flex okay we're at 46 changes that's fine we're, we're okay let's take a step back though and take a look at it so now that we've done most of the lighting and the shadow stuff we can go ahead and move on to that next step which is adding the details and when you're not sure, sure what details to put on your map or rooms or areas or regions on the map, you, need, you only need to think about a couple things. Combat, like what is happening in this area? What are your players experiencing? Okay. If they're just sitting on a fire, relaxing, talking about the, you know, the backstory, if you're sitting there as a DM preparing your players, then you don't have to have a whole lot going in there, but you could add details to make it visually appealing because players aren't doing a whole lot in that first area. You could throw in a puzzle or something. Let's say that maybe there's a gate that's on the bridge um, and it's a really tall gate and you can't get around it. You can't climb up it, maybe fly, but most players won't have that ability. So maybe you wanna put like a high gate there and you wanna puzzle, you have to solve a puzzle or you know a torch puzzle or whatever it might be to open the gate. I generally don't do that with my players. I usually start with just making a visually appealing space where they're safe and then they can plan out the events ahead and I can prep them for the campaign or the quest or what's gonna be happening on the battle map, right? So that's usually where I would start, right? So I'm not gonna add much more detail. I normally, when I think of a campfire, there's going to be uh, logs for people to sit on. Maybe there's a stump that they can sit on. Uh, maybe there's going to be some um, fire wood that people can sit on. So just think about those things. So if I put like a log down right here, another one right here maybe, and then put one over here, and some of your players are standing, you know, or maybe they're sitting, whatever it might be. And I'm going to bring the opac or the brightness down a little bit. Me personally, I really like to make the wood um, a little bit darker. Um, I think it looks better. The super bright stuff doesn't work. And also, um, I just kind of like it a little bit darker myself. So then you have that as well. And then you can do your top painting, right? You can go with the top layer here. And then you can just paint some shadows like this facing away from the fire pit, right? So that that way you have that some directional shadows and it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. So let's keep going. Let's add in a couple more things just in here to look nice. Just a couple details, like maybe we want to put in an ax, which should be in these tools right here. Oh, that's a hammer, my bad. This little, this little hatchet right here. That makes sense. And then let's also maybe just throw in a couple smaller logs. Um, let's see here. There should be some smaller ones. Let's type in log. Uh, oh, is there a smaller ones? There it is right there some smaller ones right here and I'll bring the brightness down as well on them a little bit and then we can put them maybe in a pile 
over here maybe like this it doesn't have to be since it's not you know you're not in a manor house or anything it's okay to maybe just have them scattered around mess messily right because you're in a ruined area right it doesn't have to be super clean so just go ahead and throw those logs in there i'm going to put one over here too so we're starting to build up um, some more details and of course just like before I want to make sure I throw in the shadows, so I'll put in light. We'll put in some shadows here. This some shadow here. There we go. So that way, there's that light source, and maybe I'll put the axe maybe leaning up against a log. It's always nice to do overlap. If you're ever wondering how to make details fit together, always do overlap. If there's a log. Have uh, maybe a bush growing over it. Maybe have a sword sticking into it or an axe leaning up against it. Whenever you're trying to show more depth, overlap is that trick, right? So putting that axe over that log gives it an extra layer of depth. So always layer your details so that that way it really kind of looks like there's way more depth. It's an easy trick, not hard to do. Okay. All right. Let's... Let's see how much time we have here. We got time. Let's go ahead and move into the bridge section and we can go into here. And one thing we could do is, because this is such a tight space, let's turn the grid on real quick. Because it's such a tight space, we can start throwing in maybe some traps. You know, maybe add some level of danger. Um, and so we could use a series of traps. There's these right here. There's maybe this metal one right here. You could place that right here if you wanted to. If you want it to blend more, you could just change the blend mode to luminosity and then maybe change, bring the contrast down a little bit and that way it blends in a little bit better. So playing with um, playing with the, what's the word I'm looking for? Playing with uh, the contrast and the blend modes can help to make stamps blend in better. Now they're all designed to work together, but if you want it to blend in a little bit more, then of course you could just use those techniques all right, I'll throw in just one trap. There's no need to make it ridiculously difficult. Maybe players grab a log and put it across. Maybe they just walk along the edge to avoid it. Who knows, right? There's all different ways to do it. So we can just throw in one trap just for fun. It's a tight space. So adding some challenge, maybe they have players have some combat right there. I usually don't start combat just in right away. Personally, that's um, usually I like to start with a trap. A puzzle or maybe exploring learning getting some details first about what's happening the more information your players have the more they have to work with okay so that's why it's so important to me that I usually start with a peaceful area and then as we go up each level the starting the starting level um, once we start all these levels then um, of course you know, you can add different layers of difficulty as you're going up towards the tower, which obviously the tower being the most. Okay. All right. So let's, we're at 82 changes, make a couple more changes. Um, one thing that you can do is because there, we have all these nice vines, you'll notice that there's not a lot of color and a, a nice artistic trick for those of you who want to take the extra time to make their battle maps look good. I like to throw in a pop of color, right? Because right now we only have green, we only have um, gray and brown. These are very um, natural colors. So what we want, want to do is throw in a warmer color like a red or a yellow and put that maybe on the vine. Okay, so let's maybe go in here and we'll type in flower. And we've got roses. We've got these beautiful blue flowers right here, which I actually kind of like. And I'll go ahead and just put one down on the green and then also make sure it's up a layer. And I want to make sure that it goes well with the green. I kind of like blue, but you can also um, change it to a, maybe a reddish color. We can sh bring the saturation all the way up so that way I can really see the color when I'm changing the U. And maybe we can find like a red or something or a pink. Maybe those would also do well. Now, when if you're having difficulty finding um, a red, you can get as close to red as possible and then bring the brightness down. And it kind of is a little bit more red. Um, personally, I kind of like the blue. So I'm gonna, probably going to end up sticking with that. I like that blue color. And then I'm going to also make sure that it's set to random and then random rotate. and 
what I recommend is just making a couple flowers that are bigger first. So just make a couple bigger ones or medium sized ones, place them on top. So we're getting this nice color now. What's also nice is that um, it shows time, right? That how much time do you think has passed since these ruins, you know, before these were not ruins, right? Throwing in flowers shows that time has passed, right? So think about those kind of things. And then now that we've added some bigger ones, let's scale it down and then throw in a couple more at a different size. There we go. We're trying to go for this natural look, right? Nature has varying, has a lot of variation. So putting in all the same size flower is going to look very bizarre. So throwing in just a couple uh, big ones, medium sized ones, small ones will help to kind of create that, that illusion of variety, right? Okay. All right, let's throw in a couple here. All right, and I think I'll just throw in maybe even some tiny ones just to give it that one last bit. And I'm using, just so you know, I'm using a mouse for this. I'm not using the pen. So it's very simple, just single clicks. Now you may be tempted to maybe do an area brush, um, which is up here, you'll see area. I don't recommend that because then it looks very clustery and then unreal. So you know, spacing out the flowers, making them dispersed, creating some clusters and areas where they're a little bit more sparse. This gives it a more natural feel to it. So make sure to not necessarily use the area brush. Does this take more time to do single clicks? Yeah, absolutely. But does it pay off? Yes, absolutely. You know, great maps take time. Unfortunately, that is just the way it is, okay? Now I've added in that blue and already, it's kind of beginning to pop out more. You've got that bright blue. It looks really nice. Maybe it's nightshade, maybe, oh yeah, maybe it's nightshade, right? Players have to be careful. Be careful with that nightshade, okay? So lots of cool things that you can do. Really pops out. I've done 168 changes, we're gonna say. And then we'll kind of move on to the next stuff. We oh, have about 18 minutes left, so let's throw in, let's quickly put in um, some other kind of details that look nice. All right. Has it been stuck for a while? Oh, no. Well, let's take a look here. One moment while I get that fixed, okay? Let's take a look. Oh, it does look like it is. It is. All right, we'll fix that. Sorry about that. Okay. Sorry about that, everybody. I had no idea. Take a look here. Does it look better now? I hope. Sorry about that trouble. I think a window accidentally popped out and it closed it out. So I hope we're here. Sorry about that. Oh, no. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. But what I basically did was just add flowers. On top, you'll see that I got big blue flowers, medium flowers, and small flowers. Well, I appreciate everyone's patience with me here. All right, so we've added in those beautiful flowers. And of course, you put them where the vines are. That's where the greenery is. I'm sorry you missed that. But all I did was just varying size, large, medium, small, and then disperse them without using that area brush, which if you don't remember, the area brush is up here, right here, size of area to fill. All it does is just create larger clusters, all right? So yes, it didn't take, um, didn't take very long to do this stuff. So let's go ahead and add in the next couple stuff. Some other things is because you have that greenery, let's throw in some vines, right? I mean, that's always a nice ground cover. So I'll throw down these vines right here and I'm gonna put them down. Uh, let's see what happens if I place them. I know there is some mask effects. And what I like to do with these one, I like to use these big ones because it's less work. Using the single individual vines is a lot of work. So I'm going to change the U to make it a little bit more greener to match with the green. And I'm gonna bring the brightness down because it's on the ground, right? And then I'll just go ahead and place it right there like that. And I'll just copy, I'll just place a bunch of them. And of course, wherever there's green is where you're gonna put it. So I'll put one right there. That makes sense. Maybe put another one. Oh, I don't want the single ones. So turn off that random stamp. Let's put another one right here. Uh, let's see here, where else is there green? Oh, another one in this corner would look good. There we go. And let's put another one right here. This corner would be good. There we go. So adding in those vines, you just keep adding more of the ground texture or in ground stuff. Okay, let's take a look. Let's turn everything off here and let's take a look at other options. Um, we can continue with maybe adding a little bit more nature. So some things you can add is like a fallen tree. 
that's some good stuff. There should be some trees in here. Oh, there's also, these are really nice right here. These logs, these are fantastic. And it has a little bit of green on them. These are from that, that jungle pack. These are great. And I like to use these as obstructions. So maybe um, you wanna get up this staircase, but there's a giant log in the way. So you can put, you know, a log right there. You can put a couple logs there, put another one right here. Maybe that blocks a, uh, an area that you're trying to get into. You can put it in the middle of a open area to act as something to interact with in combat. So if you put one like right here, like this, the players can hide behind the log or there's some bad guys hiding behind the logs. So really you have a lot of options there. So logs are, are fallen logs or fallen trees are great obstructions. They're things that you can interact with. You can knock over, you can trip uh, an enemy by make, by kicking them in the chest maybe and they fall over the log. Remember, when it comes to combat, players like interaction. A flat area with nothing to interact with is not fun for players. They want to be able to take a bucket and smash the teeth out of a goblin, okay? So you have to think about an environment that players are going to be able to work with, okay? All right. In fact, I'm going to take all my lights. I'm going to select them all, and then I'm going to Alt-L and lock them. Okay. Now we have that, and I locked those lights so I won't accidentally select them. So let's go ahead and put a log right here. It's something that players can interact with. I might even bring the brightness down just a little bit. They are pretty bright, I feel. I'm just trying to keep with the overall, uh, not tone, but the kind of same brightness as the ground texture. If it's too bright, then it pops out too much. So we'll add that one and we'll add another log as well. Maybe one even going across. Maybe uh, you have some bad guys on top of a wall and they're about ready to push this log poof, down onto someone's head. So you can put one there or right here, um, wherever you think is best. You, or just maybe you want it leaning up against a wall, right? And maybe there's some bad guys that are over here in this area waiting to ambush you, but you can players can walk up this log and go across here, hide behind the wall and then ambush them. So alternate routes to help deal with combat, as long as it doesn't uh, backtrack your players too much. If it's just a couple spaces, you know, a dozen spaces or so, that's fine. So not, don't try not to do too much backtracking, okay? All right, so, and then since I have logs in this area, it's probably a good idea to put a lot of them uh, in that area. So I'll put a couple more in here, maybe one that's sticking like this, stick it out like that. There we go. So now we got some nice logs there and they're green. They kind of match in with it. Let's go ahead and keep adding just a couple more stuff. How much time we got here? Well, plenty of time. Sweet. Cool. Um, roots are something that you can have, um, especially if you have trees. Um, if you have trees, it's really great to put roots around. We are going to put trees out here eventually, but we'll save that for another episode. Let's um, maybe add in some um, browns in here. I'm seeing a lot of blue, green. Um, what we could add in here is some warmer colors. A brown is a warmer color. What I like to do is to uh, create the idea that there was maybe some walls that were made of wood, paneling. I like to go into the catalog and just type in wood and then look up some interesting types of wood uh, stamps. What I really like is these broken ones right here, broken wooden walls. Since we're in a ruin, it kind of makes sense. So what I'll do is I'll take some of this wood right here, put it down. It is a little too um, bright. So I'll bring the brightness down a little bit, but it's got this nice brown, warmer color feel to it. And then what I'll do is I'll make sure that it's below the walls and I can place it somewhere where I think it might be appropriate. Like maybe place it one, uh, one right here like this. And of course I will want to change it to an object shadow because I do want it to pop out a little bit. So I'm, when it comes to object shadows to keep in continuity with the uh, drop down shadow that I'm using from using high noon, I'm going to just use a basic object shadow that has no horizontal or vertical offset. And I'll just keep adding, uh, you know, pieces of wood that I feel match to certain areas that look nice. So maybe I want to put some right here. Maybe I want to put some, let's put another one over here. Well, let's put it away from there. Put one over here. Right here looks good. Uh, let's keep going. We'll just keep adding some more, some more wood to it. There we go. Put one right there. That looks good. 
And I'm just going to add a whole bunch up against the wall. It could be it could be uh, the wall that fell apart. It could just be rafters that collapsed and fell down. So many different ways to go about doing it. So, but in, and also it's a it's a warmer color. It goes against those cooler greens, so it pops out a little bit, right? And of course, everything is all of the structures and the ground textures are gray, so that's a neutral color, which causes those warmer and cooler colors to pop out because of that neutral gray. So that's why I do a lot of gray um, in my in a lot of my maps because I like that neutral color, making it easier and making it look nicer um, when I finally apply the warms and the cools to it. So we'll keep adding just a, a whole bunch more here, maybe one in this corner over here, maybe push it down a layer. There we go. I want it to kind of pop out a little bit. And then let's add one more. And then we will, oh, you know what? Let's actually create a, maybe like a barricade. Like th maybe this is like a barricade where there's some, um, maybe some monsters right here who are guarding this. So this is like a barricade and you have to like crawl over it or you want to stab them in the eyeball with one of these wooden slivers you've got right here. One of these pieces of wood, Ta! take them out. You can do that, right? So we'll add a little barricade here and just show that there's height. Again, go to object shadow. And I will make sure that there is no offset. I'm going to make the blur a little bit higher, bring the opac or bring the intensity up, and that way it really shows like that. Okay. The next thing then is because I have some big wooden pieces, it probably wouldn't hurt to um, type in wood in here, and there might be some twigs or some forest stuff in here we could look for. Let's go ahead and check. The catalog on the left side, we're gonna scroll down. Let's look up forest. Okay, what's this? Fallen leaves, we've got some grass. There's some moss here, That that's a cool one. I like that one. Oh, here we go, twigs and stones. Let's use that. So now where you see the wooden um, barricades and stuff, don't be afraid to um, of course, resize. Whenever you're adding a texture, you have to size it. So I'm going to bring it down a little bit. So we got some nice twigs there. And I'm going to bring the brightness down because I want it to be darker than those wooden barricades. So I go to color, bring the brightness down. And then when I can go in and just wherever you see barricade, throw in some of those twigs and stones. And it will look like it's continuing a little bit. So it looks kind of like a nice transition in the texture. So we'll put some here as well. Some over here. Like I said, wherever you see those wooden barricades, those wooden stamps, throw in that. And it will create a nice transition between the stamp itself and the ground texture that you're using. So it always looks really nice. I'll even throw some in here as well, because I think that looks kind of nice. There we go. Looks cool. Digging that. There we go. Oh, oh yeah, put some more in here. There we go. And I also am thinking I'm going to throw in some little tufts of grass, and I'm going to put the tufts of grass wherever there's green, okay? It's the same concept. I'm creating this illusion, right, of transition. So I'm going to go change the placement, change the size. And I might leave it as it is. Let's just take a look first. Uh, you know, a little too bright. So I'm going to undo. And I'm going to change the color to be a little bit we will make it a little bit darker. There we go. And then I can throw it down. There you go. And wherever there's green, just throw down some grass. Wherever there's vines, throw down that grass so that that way, again, the transition. So really kind of some nice tricks. You can use alpha textures like these to kind of create a nice smooth transition between your texture and stamp. Okay. And wherever I see it, cool, cool, cool. Looking good, looking good. All right, we're getting there. Just got to keep adding it. All right, where are we at here? Oh, let's put some over here and here, right here. Oh, even on, on the stairs a little bit. So it looks like there's some moss on there. I like that. Oh yeah, I need a little bit more over here. There we go. We're getting there, almost. All right, let's take a step back. Oh yeah, there's some over here too. Let's do that. All right, there we go. All right, well, we got a lot of changes there. So let's go ahead and save it. All right, sweet, awesome, loving this. This is turning out really good. I'm really enjoying it. How much time do we got here? Oh, sweet, we got about six minutes. Let's go ahead and throw in um, 
what I like to do is in one area, I like to have a focal point. And the way that I do a focal point is by throwing in one stamp or an amalgamation of stamps that's going to be the focal point in each area. So when the starting area, you notice that the focal point is the fireplace, right? Or not the fireplace, <laughs> um, the campfire, right? So then maybe um, the kind of the focal point on the bridge is the trap, right? Um, another, And then we go into this layer right here, into this um, spot right here, this whole area, there should be a focal point. So I could throw in maybe a well that players can kind of interact with. Maybe push, maybe creatures come out of them. Maybe players can push creatures down them. Maybe, um, you know, whatever it might be. And I'm going to put it in a place that's not within a building because wells are generally outside. So I'll put it outside of a building. And I think right here looks good. Let's throw it down right here. And I'm going to bring, um, bring the size down and bring the brightness down. There we go. So there you have that. And then what I'll do there is also grab a bucket. You know, when it, when it comes to that, I want to throw in something that players can also. And so I can throw down a bucket, throw it down right here, place it, rescale it, and put it down right there. So now you have a bucket next to the well. And I think I'm going to take a piece of wood and put it across as well. So I'll just take a piece of wood and uh, let's go with this one. I'm just going to put it across like this. There we go. And I'm going to bring the brightness down a little bit because... I like them a little bit darker and I'm going to transform the width, make it a little bit thinner. There we go. So now you have that. And you'll notice that I, um, that piece of wood is not perfectly at 90 or 180. It is angled a little bit. And so is that, um, so is that bucket. You always want to make sure that you, uh, be sure to not have every, anything at 180s or 90s, especially details. See, the walls are already at 180 and a 90, right? You can always see that. So make sure that your details break from that rotational pattern, right? You wanna make sure that you, make sure things are rotated a little bit so that that way it's not all the same because too much of a 180 or 90, too much of that all over the place, it just looks too mathematical. It doesn't look natural. Um, so make sure that you do that. So I've added in a well. So there's our first little area in there. I could also throw in some um, more details like chairs. There are some broken chairs that can work just fine. So let's see here. Here, there, right here. I'm going to place it down. I'm going to bring the brightness down on it. And this is another thing that your players can interact with, right? Is these they can throw chairs around. Um, they can hit. They can kick people with, and trip them over it. A lot of things you can do. So just throw in just a couple chairs. That way there's a sum in there, and that way it also has a function, right? That what, what will happen in this room? Whatever they're doing, they're probably sitting, right? So throwing in a couple of those broken chairs is good. And in fact, you can go into up here and you go to add a filter, and you can ch use a tag, and there should be a broken one, and everything broken will pop up in the catalog. So I can now look at everything and say, okay, now I know where the broken stuff is, and I can kind of go over each one. Um, as always, great things to add are crates and barrels. Another great thing to add, and we'll go ahead and um, make sure that I have a custom object shadow to where it sticks out a little bit. There we go. And I'll put one here. I'm gonna go ahead and choose a different one. Put one maybe over here in this corner right there. I like to have them in an area that's somewhat open or at least up against walls, right? When normally when you have boxes, you're storing something, you put it up against a wall, right? You don't put it in the middle of the room unless it's a storehouse or something like that. So what I'll end up doing then is uh, just placing them up against a wall or near a wall is really the best place that I put a lot of things. But it's not, you don't have to do that. Absolutely. Okay. Let's take a step back. Yeah, I'm loving it. These browns now, these warmer colors are kind of popping out and brown is a natural color green is a natural color gray is a natural color these really help really starting to pop out now um we're at 40 minutes so i'm just going to throw down just maybe a few more details and then we will call it good so some things you can throw in is um, some details like maybe there's a backpack if troops or if you have some monsters who are guarding this area right here. Remember we mentioned there's a barricade right here. Maybe throw in some things um, like a backpack, 
or maybe a water skin. These belong to um, the people who are guarding. You can throw in things like that. Uh, maybe you want to throw in some bed rolls, right? Where are they sleeping? Maybe they're sleeping up here. Maybe the bad guys are sleeping over here. So bed rolls are a great way to show like, hey, this is where the bad guys sleep. I see right here, there's a little unlit fire here. So not a bad place to kind of put some bed rolls over here. Not a bad idea. So I'll just put a couple over here like this and one over here. Let's see, there we go, rotate it. Maybe have it to where it's kind of leaning on the rock there. There we go. So you have some bed rolls there. And let's take a step back. Look here, let's throw in one more little tiny thing in here for the focal point in this room. And then we're gonna uh, call it good for this stream. Maybe we wanna throw in some chests so um, let's type in, just type in chest because I want to use particular ones. Let's have one that's locked. And I usually, to represent that, I'll use one of these ones. And because it uh, has those bars on it, maybe there's something more important inside of it. And I like to hide it away. I try not to put it in perfect view um, when I first walk into an area. So maybe hiding it up against this wall right here is not a bad idea. And then maybe put some smaller ones that probably don't have quite as valuable stuff in it. Um, you can put those in areas that are maybe um, a little bit more visible. Players can see it. And I won't make it perfectly flush with the wall. I'll rotate just a little bit like that. And we'll put in one more, maybe over here like this. There we go. And we'll make sure to put that down a layer. There we go. There we go. So you have some chests there as well. Okay. All right, well, that is it for this stream. In the next episode, which we'll do next month, part five, we will actually be throwing in the last final details. Um, this little uh, octagon section right here, we're, we're, this is gonna be a big boss battle with a, a living statue. So what I wanna do is maybe put some corpses over there or maybe some blood to make it look like, hey, the players have an inkling that something bad is happening here, but they don't know. But the thing that pops out is the statue. So giving your players an inkling of what's to come gives them a little bit of time to plan or to quick think. So whatever it might be, you'll find all these episodes, by the way, uh, on YouTube, by the way, part one, all the way till now. So just go to the YouTube channel, Incarnate, and you can go and do that there. So let's go ahead and do the save. All right, hey. Guys, this was great. Sorry about that interruption earlier. Didn't realize that happened, but we got that fixed. It was only about maybe two or three minutes and you didn't miss much. So thank you for bearing with us on that. I look forward to our next stream. Super excited. Please stay safe and healthy. Merry map making and Avidizane, my friends.